Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice and to another fireside Q&A chat. Today's a bit of a special video. Normally, I would be releasing a reaction and analysis video, but it was blocked by YouTube. And this sparked a lot of questions among my Patreon community about copyright and how that works, especially with regards to reaction videos. So I made this to help shine a little bit of light on a very complicated process. We're going to take a look at what copyright is, why some reaction and analysis videos are considered fair use, and how the legal system behind YouTube that assigns copyright works. FYI, I am not a lawyer, but I have gone through this process a lot and consulted with my legal team, and I wanted to share my experience. First things first, what is copyright? A copyright is a collection of rights that automatically vest to someone who creates an original work of authorship, like a literary work, song, movie, or software. In music, if a composer writes a song, the copyright of that song belongs to that composer. However, a lot of musical bands and composers want to use a publisher or label to help promote or manage their music. And part of that deal is a revenue share, and it also often includes ownership of the copyright, transferring it to the publisher or label. If you want to see who owns the copyright on YouTube, click show more on a video, and then look for licensed to YouTube by, and read the names afterwards. There may be several people or companies listed, and all of them have some piece of the copyright. If you didn't know before, you do now. Music law is very complicated. Now, we all hopefully know that you should not copy another person's work. Automatically detecting copyrighted material is essentially how YouTube traces and makes sure that people don't rip off music from others, but it is okay to use a person's music in very specific situations. If you have a license, for example, or if it qualifies as fair use. Fair use is a legal doctrine that promotes freedom of expression by permitting the unlicensed use of copyright protected works in certain circumstances. To qualify for fair use, at its essence, the work must be transformative of the original copyrighted material, meaning that it should comment upon it, criticize it, or even make a parody of it. So not all reaction videos are fair use but some do qualify for fair use if you take a look at the four legal guidelines established by the H versus Klein case in 2017. This was a landmark case about fair use on YouTube. And during it, there were four main points used to determine if a video was fair use. These are now applied to reaction videos on YouTube as follows. Does the work significantly transform the original work or does it serve the same purpose? What is the nature of the copyrighted work and how is the reaction video different? How much of the original content is used? And can the reaction video be considered a substitute for the original? All four of these factors are considered and weighed when determining if a video is fair use or not. And just so you know, the reaction and analysis videos that I make are generally considered fair use. So now that you know more about copyright and who owns it, let's talk about how YouTube applies it. YouTube has an AI that can match copyrighted content, both song and video, to things that you or I might upload. So for example, say I wanted to use a Beatles song in a video. YouTube would then recognize that song and automatically issue a content ID. Now, this analysis process usually takes place during the upload process of a video, so that content ID can be created before you've even posted your video. Once a content ID is identified and issued for a video, several things can happen. The copyright owner usually has a setting which automatically decides. First, the most common repercussion is that ad revenue and control is automatically redirected to the copyright owner. This can happen even if you have just 10 seconds of a song in your video, regardless of how long your video is. Your entire video might then be monetized by another company, and you may have to deal with them controlling the ads. Another possible recussion is that the movie could be blocked in specific countries or blocked on certain platforms. 
Or in more rare cases like the one I discovered today, it's possible for the copyright holder to elect to automatically completely block all videos that contain any of the material that YouTube identifies worldwide. Now this automatic content ID in YouTube can be particularly awesome, but it isn't flawless. It is really helpful to make sure that artists don't have their work stolen, but it isn't very favorable for people that want to upload videos that are considered fair use. If you upload a reaction and or analysis video, most likely your video will be tagged with a content ID from YouTube. If you're sure that your video is fair use, you can then dispute that claim. Usually what will happen is you'll write a message that talks about the four points I listed earlier, and that will be sent to the copyright holder to review. In my experience, most content IDs have been easily resolved and my videos were recognized as fair use. However, this can take a little bit of time. Once you dispute a content ID, the copyright holder has 30 days to respond. And during that time, the video is in limbo. That means you probably don't have control of ads and it might still continue to be blocked. Side note, I especially appreciate artists like Ronnie from Falling in Reverse. He immediately released the content ID when I did a video of his and then reacted to my reaction. This is a great way for artists to take advantage of the new fans that come from reaction videos. If your content ID dispute is rejected, which sometimes happens if the copyright holder doesn't agree that your video is fair use, or maybe they just don't really bother to watch it or look at the details, then the next step is to appeal the decision. The appeal process is similar to the dispute process, but with a little more teeth. By appealing, you're asserting that your video is indeed fair use. You will need to answer these four questions and legally sign that you understand the possible consequences and are being truthful. And if the other party disagrees, they can then issue a takedown notice. This means that YouTube will forcibly remove your video and you will likely incur a copyright strike. At this point, in my experience, most copyright holders will give your video a more thorough glance and probably release their claim. This is because they realize that the revenue and fans generated by reaction and analysis videos is actually really good for their business. Unfortunately, up until now, there's not a third party that will step in and review the dispute. So you can continue to say that your video is fair use, but the copyright holder can go ahead and continue to push back even if they haven't ever watched your video to determine if it is fair use or not. Now, they're not supposed to do that, but it does happen sometimes. There's even a term for companies that harass YouTubers with extra copyright claims and strikes. They're called copy strike trolls. And FYI, copyright strikes are bad. With just one strike, you cannot live stream on YouTube. And if you get three strikes within three months, your channel will be permanently removed. If one of your YouTubes is taken down and you receive a copyright strike, only then can you push back for third-party intervention and submit a counter notification. This is a legal notification that is reviewed by YouTube and forwarded to the copyright holder. This notice requires the copyright holder to take additional action beyond just saying no. The copyright holder has 10 to 14 days to respond by filing a lawsuit against the claimant, you. So don't file a counter notification unless you are dang sure your video is fair use. In my experience and from what I've read, most companies will not respond to a counter notification, especially if your video really is fair use. So 10 to 14 days later, YouTube will automatically reinstall your video. However, during that time, you'll be suffering under a temporary copyright strike, which sucks, and your video also won't be up online. There is so much more to copyright process than I've described here, but hopefully this helped to clarify it a little bit. Remember, I'm not a lawyer, but I have been through this a lot, so hoping that that answered some of your questions and maybe helped you out if you're going through a similar situation. As an extra bonus, in the About section, I'm going to include the phrasing that I use when disputing a content ID. 
I truly make all of my videos with education in mind and with the aim to support and encourage enthusiasm for amazing artists. Thank you for your time today, and I'll hope to see you somewhere soon.